we do do, we're going to do over and over and over, and then we'll do them again until we get it right and do it well, because I would much rather do three or four things well than nine or ten things and do them so-so. Well, it's root, root, root for the home team. They don't win, it's a shame. While it's one, two, three, stack you out at the old let the games begin, and the Orioles out of the gate quick. The hitting good, the pitching great. I try not to get too excited when we play well so that I, uh, I don't have a, uh, a void when we don't play well and stay on a pretty even keel, and as my kids say, consistently blah. Wild pitch, and this game is over. You guys sit in the clubhouse and talk about this all and say this is getting a little scary. <laughs> no, Maybe we'll we talk should... about other things. <laughs> Can't tell you about <laughs> Friday afternoon, the Orioles and the Mets broke in the new ballpark. Their first impressions? Uh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> in the game, a big five-run sixth inning capped off when Chris Hoyles rips one through Dave Magadan into left field. Two Orioles come in to score on the air, and the Birds christen Camden Yards with a 5-3 win. Walking out there in that stadium is just almost brings the same feeling as walking into Yankee Stadium when I was a Yankee and knowing that this is the house that Ruth built, you know, and that looking at this ballpark has just all the charm of a Yankee Stadium, and the, I can't even compare it to another stadium, the, how beautiful it is out there on the field, because there's never been a stadium as beautiful as this one built. It was opening day in a way, but uh, we all know that we're going to have to come back here on Monday, and that's when it all starts, and that's where the beginning is, and that's when we start having fun. And how about Cal? Last year's MVP picked up just where he left off in 91. Two more hits and an RBI. Cal's 11th season could be his toughest. Can he repeat last year's monster season? We'll check in with the Orioles' Iron Man next. I have no choice here. Nothing but mangoes to eat, no restaurants, no places to shop, no travel agents. One piece of furniture, one lousy sound system. I need more choices. I need my book. Right here, Mr. Jones. All the choices you need. Thanks, Friday. Friday, you got the phone? Just the fact. The genuine CP telephone yellow page. Nine out of ten use it. No other book can match it. A Bell Atlantic Company. Obviously, we thought of life. Oh, that's cold. Why have so many of your friends and former neighbors already moved to Charlestown? You live completely independently. Oh, the apartment is great. It's the best move that I ever made in my life. Everyone is really congenial. The most wonderful people I've ever come across. We've been happy from the first day we got here. I'm very happy here. Don't wait until it's too late. Come on in here and enjoy it. I'm very happy here. I love Charles Hamm. Isn't it time you start enjoying Baltimore County's most popular retirement benefit? Between the lines down on the field here at Oriole Park at Camden Yards, this man is in charge. Paul Zwasco heads up the grounds crew, and uh, you've been a, a busy bunch uh, trying to get this place ready, I guess. <laughs> uh, busy isn't the word. More like harried, I think, is, is the word. We've had, uh, we've had our hands full with uh, working around all the contractors and everything and uh, trying to get done what we got to get done, and sometimes they don't understand that... Uh, 
you know, the field yep. comes first. <laughs> for, for years, we were used to seeing you guys down the left field corner. Uh, the Orioles would win a game, yeah. your guys would come running out, you'd be ducking <laughs> fall balls. Or they'd be pointing for a ball. <laughs> the tomato like patch. Yeah. You, you guys were part of the game, actually. Uh, yeah. It's going to be a little different here. Well, don't count my guys out. They, <laughs> they have ways of making themselves uh, be in the game. Uh, we'll, we'll be out there in right center field, uh, fairly exposed. Uh, it's the only area in the whole field where you have actually see-through fence. Mm -hmm. And uh, my guys will be sitting behind there. It's a little bit longer of a run towards the top, which is the one thing that worries us the most. But uh, it's, it's where we ended You're up. You're going to have to go for a faster crew now, right? Well, uh, hopefully they're not <laughs> out of breath by the time they get to the tarp. That's what I worry about. <laughs> now, when fans come out, out to the ballpark, they're going to say, what's that little uh, thing down in the right field corner? <laughs> that, that's you, right? Yeah, it's not, uh, it's not the president's uh, suite or anything like that. That's the groundskeeper's suite. And probably the only groundskeeper in the major leagues that actually has a view of the field from his office, as far right. as I know. Now, I try not to let the salespeople know about yeah. this window. This, this is a visiting well, dugout, right? So you can steal signs for Johnny? Yeah, so I only know how to write, read them. Yeah, I, don't know, I, don't know <laughs> I didn't play much baseball, so I didn't know many signs. I think the, one, the thing we've heard the most about is the uh, intricate new uh, drainage system with the PAT turf. All right. Uh, tell us how that's going to help you and help the Orioles. Well, uh, for the most part, the, of course, the people aren't going to see a difference, really, for the most part, out here on the field. But uh, underneath this field, there's an intricate system of drain tile uh, that are attached to vacuum pumps back uh, behind my office and, uh, and a huge control board that looks like, uh, you know, the, the, <laughs> the, the, dash, the dashboard for, for a space shuttle. <laughs> One important time that we would use sub-irrigation would be during a ball game, afternoon games commonly. Uh, a lot of times they have problems getting the field through the day with water. And what we can do is, you know, Ripken can be out there taking a ground ball off a somebody's bat and he won't even know we're watering the field underneath them. Where the, where the fans are going to see the difference probably would be after a rain delay mm -hmm. uh, during a game. Um, normally in the past at Memorial Stadium we take the tarp, you know, dump it, come back, roll it up and they're ready to play ball and, and then the ball players push flash out in the outfield for the next uh, six, seven, eight innings, however, we got, however long we got left. Uh, in, in this case, uh, on, the, on the, the field here at this park, uh, by the time we bring that tarp back, fold it up and roll it up, for the most part, any excess water in the field will be gone. Wow. Uh, so if you save the Orioles uh, three rainouts a year, that system's going to pay for well, itself in a hurry. See, you're not really, you're not really saving rainouts because most of the time, the only time we get a rainout is when it continues to rain and rain and rain and we can't play. I mean, you can't pull off the tarp off the infield dirt while it's raining. Right. But what it will do is it makes the playing field that much safer for the ball players. So uh, players like Cal and Bill Ripken will let you know if they think everything's great in their area, and and maybe let you know if they think uh, you could make an improvement. In some Regard. Oh yeah, yeah. They're, they're not. They won't hesitate at all in doing that. What kind of things that, might, might they say? Give me a typical example. Uh, it might be something like if the infield needs more water, or the infield has too much water, or it's too hard or too soft. Mostly things like that. How excited are you? I know you, you got all this work to do, but how excited are you about uh, showcasing uh, this beautiful facility? I'm real excited. I mean, that's that's an understatement of the year. But at the same time, I'm you know you're you're worried about getting everything done in time. You're worried about the weather, uh, all those kind of things. So it's you know it's, the excitement gets uh, balanced out by you, your worriness and everything else and nervousness of whether you're gonna get everything done. But uh, when all is said and done, I mean this this ballpark just brings chills to my spine like Wrigley Field used to when I was a kid. So this is where Cal will roam out here. Oriole Park at Camden Yards. We always know who the shortstop is going to be. The two-time MVP has a new challenge this year. It's a new park, a new challenge for Cal. And here's a look at his game plan. By getting off and getting a few hits, getting a hit my first at bat down here, it just takes that, that monkey off your back a little bit. That little bit of a doubt you think that um, you hope things start out and, and go the same way they did last year, but you never really know. And then when you get a couple hits, you say, yeah, I think they will. Cal's brilliant summer of 91 hasn't lost any momentum in the spring of 92. He tore up the Grapefruit League, spraying line drives up and down the Florida coast. The table's set for another big year. As for the two-time MVP's specific goals... Well, the goals as far as... Uh, published or unpublished? <laughs> <laughs> if they're private, I can't tell you them. All right. But, but I mean, uh, do you have private goals? Yeah. I mean, obviously, uh, uh, a year is measured... Uh, if you're an RBI guy, by how many RBIs you're driving, or if you're someone that can hit home runs, how many home runs you hit. But um, the thing that I learned a lot last year 
I mean, I surpassed my career high in RBIs and, home, and in home runs. And I didn't do that by thinking that I was going to hit that many home runs to start out the year. Uh, I did that by trying to focus and trying to forget about your last at bat and concentrate on, on this at bat. And, and my consistency and the fact that I could focus allowed me at the end to look back and, and accumulate a pretty good statistical year. So the thing that, that I'm really going to strive for this year is to try to maintain that same focus and the same concentration because that was the real reason that you're allowed to compile the statistics is, is if you can focus and be consistent on a daily basis and have good at-bats. The more good at-bats you have, the better chance you have to get hit. Baltimore's franchise player was a big hit in the offseason. Cal and wife Kelly raised over $200,000 hosting Winterfest for Literacy. And it was prime time with Arsenio and Letterman. The big boys called and Cal answered. Does Dad ever get on your nerves? <laughs> There's only so many opportunities that come along, and those opportunities usually only come along when you have a really good year. So if you skip them at that time, you might not ever get a chance to do them again. So I did the Letterman show, and I did Arsenio Hall show, and uh, th they, those were kind of fun things. Oh, short hopped it! He short hopped it! You haven't had any ground balls like that this spring? I don't think you've had a knockdown, right? No, that, that definitely was the hardest uh, baseball thing I've done all year. but. Uh, those kind of things are fun, and I, and I really enjoyed getting into them, but at the same time, I'm glad that when spring training started, it kind of kind of cut me off from that schedule and put me back onto a normal schedule that I'm used to. One thing that's getting to be a habit is losing. Five of the last six seasons have left this winter with a losing team. How, how about the mixed emotions of having a career year like you had last year, but yet um, maybe some empty feelings because uh, the, the club wasn't able to accomplish more. Everybody plays this game to win. Well, that's something that you have to deal with and, and you learn to deal with a little bit. It doesn't mean you have to accept it. And anybody that's played this game or anybody that's played any game for that matter, you derive the most fun and satisfaction out of winning and that's the bottom line. So last year there was a void. I mean, the fact that I came back and, uh, and, and focused and, and concentrated and had a really good year myself, I'm proud of that. But at the same time, I want to get back and, and be on a winner. It's easy to be optimistic on opening day, but Cal makes a case for the 92 Orioles. When you look at our club, we have the nucleus. We can catch the ball, we can throw the ball, we can make all the plays defensively. We can score a few runs. We have the nucleus of a pretty good offensive club. If you just break it down to the different parts of the game, um, if our starting pitching can go out there and pitch the way they're capable of, and, and those guys can develop the same way Atlanta did and the same way really Minnesota did, it's not inconceivable to think that we can be real competitive and we can be in the race in September. Cal Ripken Jr., of course, has become the most popular of current Orioles players, but there's a former Oriole whose return has fans buzzing. Now he's going to spell it out for you. Who could forget last October 6th, Rick Dempsey returned to Baltimore to say goodbye to Memorial Stadium. He was joined by so many other Orioles greats, but it was Dempsey who left his stamp on the celebration. He wrote a poem about the stadium, His Lady in Red. I don't even really know how it all came together. I mean, I did it all in the course of an hour, half an hour or so, you know, and I was just trying to explain to myself what I really felt, the pride I felt in that organization was that we were always going to win, somehow. She's the lady in red. She's Baltimore's best. Well, everybody always referred to Baltimore's best in a lot of things. And it just seemed so um, appropriate to use that line with the lady in red. As I look at Memorial Stadium, Mike, you come to the ballpark now, they, they redid the whole thing. You have that red brick facing on the facade on the outside. And that just made that stadium unique. It looked like a baseball stadium, so I called it the lady in red. And many a great one have come from her nest. I don't think there's a higher percentage of great ball players that came from an or any other organization other than maybe the Yankees than there have been in the Baltimore or organization over the years I've seen. She gave birth to a thousand, adopted a few. By the way that she loved them, nobody knew. This organization created a lot of good ball players. They knew how to teach ball players. And I give Cal Ripken Sr. a lot of credit for that because in my estimation, um, 
He's probably the best all-around coach I've ever seen in the game. He breaks everything down into a simple um, answer for every question that there is about how to play the game of baseball. There was always a lot of good coaches around that organization to teach the players. And when I said uh, adopted a few, yep. they went out into other organizations, then they got other players that they knew could help this ball club. There was Brooksy and Frank and Booger by name. There was Palmer, McNally, Paulie and Blade, Eddie and Flanny and Tippy and Scott, Dauber and Cuellar, Stanhouse and Stodd. Nicknames have always been a big part of the game, mm -hmm. and every good player there always had one. I couldn't, I didn't even mention a lot of the great ones because I tried to, I tried to make everything um, correlate, you know, while I was writing the darn poem, but um, I deliberately left out some because they, they just didn't rhyme. I don't think any other organization in baseball has ever had any more dramatic finishes to games than the Orioles had in, in all of their eras. Uh, always coming from behind, always winning games with that three-run home run in the ninth inning, uh, making spectacular plays. You know, in that 70s, 80s era, there was no organization in baseball that won more games than the Baltimore Orioles. And I can, I can just always remember somebody announcing a game, you know, Way back goes the ball, it's gone, you know. And the Orioles win another one. And it's just, it was, it brings goosebumps to you to think about all of the fantastic games that we played at that stadium. Drive the right center. Oliver going back. It's all over. Baltimore wins it. An amazing come from behind victory by the Orioles. She made Earl her general and Ripken her sarge, and they led her children on a perilous charge. But when the battles had ended on October subside, there stood the lady in all of her pride. She's gray now and tired and goes to lay down with the penance God gave her to wear as her crown. Glory and honor will sleep at her feet for the miracle she gave us on 33rd Street. Well, this is where Rick Dempsey might spend a lot of his time, sitting on the Oriole bench as he backs up starting catcher Chris Hoyles. But it sure is great to have Rick's spirit and determination back with the birds. When we come back, a closer look at some of the other 92 Orioles. Stay with us. Okay, now let's meet the stars of the other game in town. The Oldsmobile Drive to the Final Four Celebrate where the deals and values are spectacular on every new old. The Gallant Metabolds invite you to test drive Achieva, the year's best buy. $1.99 a month, no down payment. So much fun, so little money. Now at your nearby Gallant Metabolds. The game clock is running, so net a great deal now. Every day we use it more. <laughs> I put an ad in it. <laughs> Nine out of ten use it. No other book can match it. <laughs> Except no imitations. There's only one original. The genuine CNP telephone yellow pages. Nine out of ten use it. This is bubble. No other book can match it. A Bell Atlantic company. Baltimore County's most popular life care community is more attractive than ever. Now you can move to the St. Charles at Charlestown and enjoy the largest, most comfortable life care apartments ever built. Beautifully designed two-bedroom apartments with sunrooms, dens, and formal dining rooms. Plus, you'll enjoy great dining every evening in your elegant new atrium dining room. Models are now open for your inspection. So visit the St. Charles at Charlestown and see the very finest in life care retirement. If you've been injured in an auto accident, Man and Clark will give you aggressive, competent representation at reasonable cost. In auto accident cases, the usual attorney's fee is 33 to 40 percent of the amount recovered. Our fee is 25 percent. Why pay more? Call for a free consultation at one of our 10 locations. Call 823-HELP, Mann and Clark, a winning team of over 13 years, and save. clubhouse located below street level. Cal Ripken will get dressed over here, but there's room enough in here for all of us. This place roughly three times as large as the Orioles clubhouse at Memorial Stadium. 
Right now, let's take a look at the guys who will be getting dressed in these lockers. Johnny Oates, 92 Orioles. Show me a team with good pitching, and I'll show you a team that has a chance to win, because there's going to be nights that we can't score eight or nine runs, and if we're giving up five or six every ball game like we did last year, we're going to struggle to win, even though we scored plenty of runs. But you show me a team that only give up two or three runs a night, we're going to win our share of ball games. John Oates gets things rolling by handing the opening day start to veteran Rick Sutcliffe. After 13 years in the major leagues, the free agent was brought in for leadership. The 6'7", 215-pounder promises a change from the kinder, gentler pitching staffs of the past. We got to let these guys know that, hey, you're not going to throw at our guys and, and us not do something about it. If they knock down Davey or they knock down Garvey or one of those guys, somebody was going down when I got on the mound. Sutcliffe, the leader of the pack, but the staff's strength is the kids. 24-year-old Ben McDonald enters the season injury-free and should be ready to roll. Bob Malacki is 27 and should be the staff workhorse. He's coming off a good second half and led the team in innings pitch. Jose Mesa, the biggest surprise of the camp, won a starting spot with 24 scoreless innings. A 23-year-old Mike Mucina could be the best of the bunch. The kid with the pinpoint control pitches like a 10-year veteran. He's on the brink of a super sophomore season. I think the three of us are, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to fit into that role, you know, whatever it is. And, you know, the only pressure we're going to be put on is put on by ourselves. Mm -hmm. We start listening to what everybody says instead of just concentrating on what we're doing, going out and playing and, and uh, performing and working hard. It's no fun losing the last two years. We really didn't have a really good season, especially last year. And I want to go in there with a good attitude and take some charge. And, I mean, Maybe I don't have many years in, but I'm going to you know, do my best of trying to lead the staff as possible. It's frustrating uh, what's happened in the past and to be named the opening day pitcher last year and not get a chance to do it and try to you know, battle through a, uh, a hurt year and try to pitch. And it was frustrating, but uh, you know, that's behind me now. I mean, Coach Bosman has been talking about positive things, and I put that behind me. I'm just looking forward to the future right now. I'm looking forward to, to what's going to happen this year. Right up on. There is a lot of potential there, and I think we're on the, uh, the threshold of seeing something wonderful. The bullpen pretty much intact from last year. Their main job to set the stage for closer Greg Olson, who admits he's only as good as the starters before him. Definitely brings confidence, and you definitely think that you're going to get some work in. Uh, you know, last year we lost by one run, I mean, 35 times, I guess. And uh, with the starting pitching we have now, you got to figure they're going to give us a chance in maybe 35 of those games. So uh, I'm looking for a lot more work this year. I'm pressed 3-1 to Cal. And there's a shot into the left field corner. That'll get Brady Anderson home. Naturally, the offense revolves around MVP Cal Ripken. But it was obvious last year that he can't do it alone. A healthy Glenn Davis will go a long way. The Orioles expect 30-plus in the home run category from their cleanup hitter. One of the keys in the new park could be speed. Brady Anderson had some impressive games this spring, and he could be the leadoff hitter to ignite the Oriole offense. Mike Devereaux will be the everyday center fielder, hitting lower in the order this year to take advantage of his power and RBI ability. Shallow center could be trouble. Bill Ripken with a dive, and he makes an incredible game. Bill Ripken, the topic of off-season trade talks, is once again the man at second. The most valuable piece of equipment for this Ripken, the leather, not the lumber. That's the way I have to play, you know. Uh, I wasn't blessed with speed or, or anything like that, so I have to do the little things. If, if I'm going into a base where some people might be standing up going in that base and I have to go head first, for me, I feel head first is the quickest way if I'm going to get there. And yeah, it kind of takes its toll, but uh, these are things that I have to do. Fastball is grounded on the right side. Bill Ripken's got it over to first. I'll ever change. Uh, I'll be 60 years old, not playing at this level, mm -hmm. but I'll be playing somewhere, and I'll probably dive at that age. Then I might break a bone or something, but I'm going to dive. Chris Hoyles, number one behind the plate. His combination of the good bat and the underrated D gives the Orioles something they haven't had since Mickey Tettleton made Fruit Loops popular. Leo Gomez at third, his 16 home runs last year, the best among major league rookies. Some of the biggest noise in the bird lineup comes from the DH slot. Randy Milligan, the power from the right side, and arguably among the top three hitters on the club. Lefty Sam Horn should find Camden Yards to his liking. 
Many think he'll be the first to dent the warehouse 460 feet from home plate. Well, I'll put it to you like this. I wouldn't necessarily want to be the first, but I would like to be known to hit it the most. So if that's uh, a token of what I would like to do, then that's how I'm looking at it. But uh, of course, the first, the last, mm -hmm. that's always going to be the most impressionable one. A new impression on the field. Rick Sutcliffe ushers in the whisker era tomorrow as the Orioles have lifted their ban on beer. It makes me feel better when I'm on the mound. Greg Olson, Brady Anderson, they brought a new look to this club. Holy likes the sport of beard, so that's fine. Uh, I don't know about Beverly Hills 902-107-6349er, as in Brady. But mine's just an extra inch of hair on the side of my face. It's really not that big a deal, I don't think, huh? For those Brady Anderson sideburn fans at home, can you give us a little... <laughs> They're here to stay? They're good looking, aren't they? The king. The king lives. You get the feeling the Orioles' clubhouse is a fun one. In baseball, they call that good chemistry. More on that part of the 92 Orioles from Keith Mills. They fish together, play golf together, and they laugh together. They run together, throw together, win together, and lose together. And whether they win more than they lose can sometimes depend on one word that's often overused. The word is chemistry, and in sports, it means the right mix at the right time. That's the only way we're going to win, if we stick together and play together. Oh, oh, sit down. Sounds simple, but sometimes it's not. The game is still won or lost on the field, but it can also be won or lost in the clubhouse. Baseball players spend an incredible amount of time together, probably more than in any other sport. From the middle of February to the 1st of October, they are together virtually every single day. And the better they get along outside the foul lines, the better they play inside the foul lines. At least, that's the theory. Oh, game over. And like most families, there's ups and downs, peaks and valleys, squabbles and disagreements. The good teams seem to have fewer than others. Right now, the Orioles say they have that good chemistry, the good mix of talent on the field, and camaraderie and friendship off it. This is a close team, isn't it? I think so. I'm real impressed with uh, the friendship so far. I mean, uh, the addition that we've made, like I said, Sutcliffe and, and, and Davis. I mean, those guys are just great guys. I mean, they, they seem, uh, you know, not real. They're so nice, and uh, and we're, we're learning from them. And it's a real friendly, friendly ball club right now. Everybody's getting along, and I got a good feeling about this club. I really do. It's, it's that momentum factor. It's that confidence factor that you have in each other. And uh, that's it's going to be so important for us to get out the gate early. Um, I need I need to get out if I can go out and go eight and two or nine and three something like that if we can get away from that 500 mark all of a sudden you quit worrying about being a mediocre club and you start watching the standings every day when the young Orioles talk of chemistry they talk of Mike Flanagan and Cal Ripken and Rick Sutcliffe veterans who've been through the wars Sutcliffe says he came to the Orioles not to lead but to pitch though he is a leader he's also experienced and says the Orioles of the early 1980s taught him a thing or two about chemistry. Back in the 82, 83, and 84, the Baltimore Orioles were the last team in the American League that I wanted to face. I mean, they had that reputation. I remember watching them come in early, and, and I would go out early just to watch them take batting practice, just to watch Palmer and some of those guys, their work habits, because I knew that they what they were doing was successful, and I wanted to see if I could learn something from it. The Orioles of 10, 15 years ago had that magical chemistry, the right mix of youth and experience, depth and determination. They played well together on the field, liked each other off it, sacrificed for the good of the team. In 82 and 83, when, when uh, we won the World Series and we almost uh, made the playoffs, it seemed like you look around and you had a good blend of some young talent coming up, but you also had people that had been there in the middle of the careers and you had some people in, in the end of the You had a good blend of uh, experience and, uh, and, and youth. And it seems like now you look around the clubhouse I don't know what percentage you should have on your club, but it can only help when you have Rick Dempsey, his experience there, and it can only help the pitchers when you have a Rick Suckler out there that can talk to Ben McDonald and Messina. And uh, to have those guys mixed in with the young guys that are just developing and starting out their careers, it seems like a pretty good mix to me. There really was never any ego problems uh, among the players, and I think I really didn't appreciate it until I left. And I went to Toronto, and I think Dempsey probably realized it in some of his other stops along the way. I think you don't appreciate it until you go somewhere else and say, boy, we really did have something special. And, and uh, 
it's kind of like what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Was it because we had some success and then that chemistry builds, or was it just basically a bunch of good people that cared and worked hard? It does make a difference. For Storm and Glenn Davis, chemistry takes on a different meaning, much like it does for Billy and Cal Ripken. Glenn and Storm grew up together in Jacksonville. They are like brothers. You know, in baseball, I've never really had the opportunity. I have a lot of friends in baseball, and I may have developed a lot of relationships, but I've never had a, uh, a quote, true friend, close friend. And I've longed for that my whole career. And I think a lot of players long for that. And now with Storm being here, I mean, that's my, my dream has come true. <laughs> The trainer's room is where good chemistry can be nurtured. Jamie Reed and Richie Bansells are the landlords here, and it's here where the players can get away from it all. You know, I've always said there's something magical about putting a Band-Aid on somebody. They always feel like they're your friend after that. Band-Aid or a fishing pole. Many of the Orioles fish in their off time, and they do it together. Reed and Bansells seem to be the link. Fish in the afternoon. Talk about it in the trainer's room the next morning. Everybody wants to know what everybody else caught, so uh, it, that's, that's one way we start the morning off about bass fishing. And Malacca tells me he's the best fisherman. McDonald tells me he's the best fisherman. But I, I think you guys are quiet, so you guys must be the best fisherman. Uh, Malacca fishes in Arizona. That means if he's not standing in the desert with sand up to his knees, he got no idea. And there's not a lot of sand around here except on the beaches. Eliminate Big Bird. He's done. Big Ben has an advantage on Richie and I because Big Ben grew up in the bayous and he's used to fishing with gators between your legs and snakes everywhere. And Richie and I are a little, you know, pull back a little bit from the reptile. We got a little reptile lighter. Catching fish probably won't make the Orioles any better hitters, and it's really hard to gauge just how important chemistry is. Remember the New York Yankees of the mid to late 1970s? They'd battle each other in the clubhouse and then go out and win the war on the field. Still, everyone in baseball seems to agree good chemistry is important. All for one and one for all. Right now, the Orioles say they have good chemistry. Only time will tell. Obviously, the Oriole clubhouse has never been this plush, but it's always been a comfortable place for Oriole players. Chemistry, a trademark of Oriole teams. How has baseball changed over the years? That story's coming up next. If you've been injured in an auto accident, Man and Clark will give you aggressive, competent representation at reasonable cost. In auto accident cases, the usual attorney's fee is 33 to 40 percent of the amount recovered. Our fee is 25 percent. Why pay more? Call for a free consultation at one of our 10 locations. Call 823-HELP, Man and Clark, a winning team of over 13 years, and save. You may be entitled to as much as $2,020 if you qualify for the Earned Income Tax Credit. To find out if you do, call the Internal Revenue Service. So this is the entrance to the club level. This is where the high rollers play. Private sky suites cost fifty-five dollars to $95,000. Let's check it out. And what do we have up here? How are you, how are you how doing are today? You? Good to well, see you. Welcome to the concierge set. I don't know if I can afford level. this. <laughs> well, you can afford it for today, at least, right? What kind of services do you offer? Um, this desk will offer the services that most concierge desk offers in any resort or any hotel. We can make hotel reservations for you, dinner reservations. We can call limo if you need to send flowers to someone. Yeah, good idea. <laughs> okay. We'll also have uh, telephones, message service, a fax service for those who are watching the game and maybe feel they can't get away from their business. They need to send a fax, we'll have that as well. Now, if, if I can't afford a skybox, but I want to have a big party, maybe one night during the season, how can you handle me in that regard? Okay, we do have uh, several. We have three uh, day of game suites available. 
Uh, they vary in size, anywhere from 10 to 12 people, up to 60 or, seven, or 60 and 75 people that they can accommodate. And the price? Uh, the price for those varies anywhere from $800 uh, on up to, say, $1,200. So. $800 to $1,200 for a game. I'll get back to you on that one. The private suite buyers uh, will receive this package, which includes everything that they need to know and even more. As you can see, we have some brochures with regard to parking, schedules. These are uh, exceptionally attractive, I think, because of the color green. Uh, we have a private suite information guide and also a suite menu. Ooh, what do we have on the menu? Uh, Let me check oh, this out. Nice the hot breast. entrees, the grilled chicken breast, and the caramelized mushrooms and onions, bambino beans. All right, for the babe. The opening day tickets are special this year for those who want to save them, since this, is, this will be the first opening day at uh, Oriole Park. You can see the design is rather unique. Uh, I'll, I'll try a couple. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to the game, kids. <laughs> All right, this is Sky Suite 34. Great place to watch the game. You're located right behind a home plate. Costs you about $65,000 if you'd like to buy the place. And you're Tom, right? Yes, sir. And your job up here will be what? Private suite attendant. Meaning? And I'll make sure that, that all the customers here will have their needs served as best as possible. Finest foods, drinks. Finest foods, drinks. Make sure Channel 2 is on the television Channel out two there. Channel 2 on the television. Right. Good man, Tom. So uh, if you don't want to be inside, if it's a nice night, you come out here. You've got room for 10 seats in two rows. You can watch the game. Have Tom take care of your every need. Obviously, baseball has changed a lot at this level in Baltimore. Posh suites, multi-million dollar ball players. 3 million fans. Why is the game so popular here in Baltimore? Jack Dawson explains. The year 1970. The Orioles beat the Reds in five games to win the World Series. That summer, just over 1 million fans made it to Memorial Stadium to see the best team in baseball. More than 20 years later, the team routinely draws twice as many fans to see a club that's lost more games than it's won five of the last six years. The Orioles are going to put three million people into this ballpark this year. Part of that has to do with the fact that they are now the only game in town, what with the Colts having left a number of years ago. We of the media are partially responsible for that. We sure put on the hype for it. But something else has happened. Back in the 70s, the average age of Oriole baseball fans dropped 20 years in two years at Memorial Stadium. This has become the place the yuppies come to see and be seen. Some crazy guy up there in Section 34 got an idea. The fans just caught on. I think they came out to see that young, exciting ball club uh, that the no names. And we just had a lot of great personalities, and personalities were dying in the game of baseball at that time. A Richie Dower, Lowenstein and Renneke, Earl Weaver. People started to realize what a great manager he really was. The problems with Palmer and, you know, and the arguments and everything, they were flashy. They were attention getters. 1-1 one, one by Jovic. Here's a fly ball to deep left. Get out of here! Something called Orioles Magic had a lot to do with the popularity of what was going on on 33rd Street. There was the close call in 79, the dramatic comeback in 82, and finally, winning it all in 83. Every summer, every fall, memories piled up at the ballpark. It, it's a part of your life. It's a part of your summers. I mean, you can remember, let's say, what year was that? Well, that was 78, because remember, the Orioles did this. And I think everybody reflected on that the last weekend of last, last season. I think they're all hoping for developing new, mem new memories in the new ballpark. The park is uh, obviously a, uh, a lot to say about civic pride, and, and we are somebody, and we are a terrific organization, and the new ballpark, all that excitement. Uh, a lot of people will come maybe just to see the park at first, but I, I think you hope that uh, they also see a terrific product on the, the field, and then they become Oriole fans. It's easy being a fan when things are going well, but Orioles fans have had more than their share of hard times. In 88, we had a, well, probably the worst year in the history of the organization. And White hits a drive to left. Stone coming in, and he loses it. 
lose it in the lights. The ball rolls to the fence. Here comes Eisenreich around third, and he'll come in to score as the Royals take the lead. But the fans were still looking forward to 89, and I've said it a thousand times, if I've said it one time, that we have probably the greatest fans in the world, mainly because they love their ball club. They, they're not in love with the ball club, but they love the ball club. Uh, they want to see the ball club do well, but they do not turn their backs when the ball club fail either. They're still there to support us. Last year, Elrod was honored by the Orioles for his 24 seasons in an Orioles uniform. He's seen some fans grow up while others turn gray. Mike Flanagan was a 24-year-old rookie back in 75. Now, after 14 seasons with the Orioles, just like the crowd, he's gone from 20-something to 40-something. Another thing that stuck out with me at the end of last season when I looked around the stadium that last weekend, it seemed like everybody was kind of in their 40s. And, uh, you know, hopefully that trend will keep through. I think that the fan base that we developed in the late 70s will be there for quite some time. Now it's the children of the junior Orioles of the 60s and 70s who will call Camden Yards their second summer home. It's time for a whole new generation of excitement in Baltimore. That new stadium downtown, I've, I've been in both leagues now and I've never seen a ballpark more beautiful. Baltimore has really gone out of its way to give its fans the best they can possibly give. Tomorrow, the guys on the field get their turn to fill another stadium full of fans and start some new memories. Right, Jack, they can change all of this stuff around, but once it gets between the lines, baseball is a great game today as it's been for years. Our next stop, we're going to go beyond the left field line across the street to a Camden Yards pub where Keith Mills is talking baseball with Birds fans. Why have so many of your friends and former neighbors already moved to Charlestown? You live completely independently. Oh, the apartment is great. It's the best move that I ever made in my life. Everyone is really congenial. The most wonderful people I've ever come across. We've been happy from the first day we got here. I'm very happy here. Don't wait until it's too late. Come on in here and enjoy it. I'm very happy here. I love Charlestown. Isn't it time you start enjoying Baltimore County's most popular retirement benefits? She'll be crushed, but I need my space, my freedom. Ah, uh, just tell her. Bob, I'm leaving you for an Anheuser-Busch wholesaler. What? Why don't you know what you've got till it's gone? But we're so perfect. Why ask why? Try Bud Dry. It's dry brewed, not watered down. She'll be back. To drink light, it's satisfied completely. So while love isn't easy... Can you get me some free beer? Refreshment is... More coffee. Thanks, Joe. Business kind of slow? I hate being alone. And no one calls on the phone. May I recommend... Go ahead, you're our friend. Got an ad in that book? Yeah. What do you think, folks? It's love. Nine out of ten use it, you know. So people would show. And our business would grow. We could give it a try. Great key lime pie. An ad in this book? Just don't fire the cook. <laughs> <laughs> the genuine c and telephone yellow pages. Nine out of ten use it. Reservation? No other book can match it. A bell at length. He ran third base and the coach hit the mouth with his hat. There's a guy this year who's going to make $7 million to be a reliever, for God's sake. You, that's absurd. They're it's preposterous. It's free market, man. I'm in charge of chicken, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I got chicken. I'm in charge of chicken. <laughs> when are we going to get the chicken? 3.05 tomorrow. We have beer and chicken. 3.04, 30 seconds. That's right. It is opening day eve, and the emotions and I guess the excitement are high. I'm Keith Mills. And we're just a few blocks from the brand new Orioles Park at Camden Yards at the Camden Pub right here on Pratt Street. And with me, some of the legends of Baltimore that you might not have heard of. Legends. <laughs> Living legends of Baltimore that you mind. definitely didn't hear of. <laughs> to my left, Turkey Joe Traver. How are you to doing? my right, prime time Pat McGee. Prime time. And to his right, baseball Billy Jones. And we're going to talk some Orioles baseball and right. basically whatever else we want to talk about in the next few minutes here. First of all, gentlemen, does... Time began on opening day oh, when... Sure. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Boswell was right, yeah. Well, no, like to get nothing has happened. Nothing has happened since last, the last game of the season. Yeah. This is it. We we just left the stadium the last game of the season. Now we're starting I'll this I'll do game. trivia questions. Yeah. The first home, the first of this. Yeah. This is this. Right. Yeah. This guy has a reason to live. Yep. Yep. It's everything. I'm an impact uh, trivia guy, right? You're an impact guy, right? trivia man. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> so you guys have been hibernating all winter. Yeah. 
Haven't gone out of the house except to come here, right? Yeah. Opening day Eve. Is it like Christmas Eve? You guys gonna be able to sleep tonight? No, it's not cold. Night? There's no snow or anything like that. It's not like Christmas Eve. But it's a big night for us. I, I won't be able to sleep tonight because I'm going to be in that van all night long out on the parking <laughs> For me, it's like Monopoly. I just got the get out of jail free card. I can do whatever I want tomorrow because my wife knows it's opening day. <laughs> Carte Not blanche. I, I, I got, I Memorial got Day is what Get out of jail free card. <laughs> Carte blanche. Free I'll be ball? up all night. I'm looking forward to it. So this is a holiday for you guys tomorrow, right? This is it. It's right. a religious holiday. It's easy for you to say. I thought I did it pretty well. <laughs> okay, for the younger fans out there who have never experienced an opening day before, who are going to the new oh, ballpark boy. tomorrow, they should give it to the kids. Do you have? Yeah, that's, that should be for the kids. Do you have a message for them? Yeah, get your tickets early. <laughs> so a lot of those, a lot of those bozos that come one game in a season, the guy that sits in front of us with a bad wig, uh, remember yeah. him? Yeah. <laughs> the only time you ever see him there with a bad wig yeah. is opening day or when they get into the, the World Series or something, right? And the kids ought to be at opening day. That's what. Yeah. So you can say, boy, am I, I want the opening day, you know? Hey, last, correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Last year, during the last game of the year, that was not a game for the kids to be there. That was a game, in, in my opinion, oh, I just for, the, for the old Oriole fans who I grew agree. up in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s. I think kids should be involved in all this so that they have the oh, no. to carry on, right, right. that they're the, the generation to but come. But they wouldn't know who Gene Woodling was, Connie yeah. Johnson was there, Bob Frank Boyd, said, Bob Boyd, yeah. the rope. Oh, my Bruce father Joe. cried when Bob Boyd ran out. I cried. Field. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's wild. You cried when Mickey Mouse comes out to the airport and waves to you. What are you talking about? <laughs> okay, talk, talk, um, take me back now to when you guys began this uh, opening day. Well, we did this thing. to save, save Jones' career. Billy, baseball, Billy. To save money is why you did Well, but it was your career. He was a designated hitter. They started this designated hitter business, and Billy really wanted to. So like an insurance agent, he called all of his friends. Did I do? I wanted to take Maureen on a honeymoon yeah, so I took a spring training. Okay. Let me tell you how cheap he was, okay? <laughs> he, when we first got we the go tickets, he <laughs> moved to Edna Gardens so he wouldn't have to pay for parking. So that he, so he didn't live, <laughs> walk right in. And I'm looking for a home. No, I'm looking for a home right down here. Okay, Lamont, I want you to do, do me a favor. I want you to hand right here, buddy. And you got to look at the tie Turkey Joe has on. This is obviously a very historic piece of clothing here. And a see. very historic person. <laughs> <laughs> but if you look at the back what, now, What's the story with the tie? This is a 1954 uh, Oriole Usher's tie. Right here. And uh, I paid $250,000 for this tie. <laughs> you bought it from Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> <laughs> on the television. On the television. And it was signed by Scrap Iron Courtney. If you look real... It <laughs> wore out. I'm sorry. Are you going to wear it tomorrow? Yep. Are you going to wear that jacket tomorrow? Yep. Well, he's here to stay. Didn't you hear what he said earlier? He's not leaving. Now, his wife's he's here, here to stay. He goes well, there. Right, right, across across the street. Street. <laughs> right across the street is the uh, the home of the medical examiner of the state of Maryland. I'm going to go over to that camp out there. Sleep well. Shock trauma is right across the street. Well, you know, yeah, there's the one thing. Right. There's a good thing about the uh, state examiner's office. You could always go to get a cold one. <laughs> They're going to film around and some guy's going to be sitting with his secretary. That's right. A new team tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Same players in a lot of cases. Good or bad? Good. It's a lot of ifs. <laughs> but they could. <laughs> he's he's no, 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 I'm serious. Yeah, no. If Glenn Davis, he's an unknown quantity. Uh, Billy Ripkin's going to do well. Cal's going to do fine. And Gomez, it's pitching into You want the list of every Oriole? You see, no, I like you And we got a couple no. extra bats in the lineup. Yeah, Sutcliffe with his whiskers. Yeah, and boy, look at that. This is where it's at. Let's, let's dissect his well, role in this whole hand. thing. Mm -hmm. Clearly need a left And you need a left-hander to control it somebody, too, because the Orioles have been too easy on batters and have let them dig in too much. Yep. you got to have somebody who's got a little meanness in them, and I think that's what is going to help out yep. with some guys who aren't really mean. It's got nothing to do with the beard factor here, right? Sure it does. I think you can't cut it out. The beard factor is really there. Yeah. Speaking of beards, the Orioles did waive their beard rule for mm -hmm. Rick Sutcliffe, and now Greg Olson was growing a beard in spring training. Right. Mm -hmm. You guys sport the beards. Baseball belly, where's the beard? Can't. <laughs> we got we got Cal Ripken back at shortstop. Had the uh, MVP, or la MVP year last year. Great the year. best year of anybody in baseball. Is Cal enough again to uh, to put these guys over the hump? Is is Glenn Davis going to have to have a, a kind of year that we're expecting him to have? What what do you feel about that? It's pitching and defense. Last year we had good defense. We had good hitting. Pitching was terrible. 
this year, the pitching's better. You miss the intangibles. You're always talking about you hit the ball and all this stuff. That's statistics. That's what people talk, not the stuff that's that what you're you doing. People talk. Intangibles. <laughs> Who says intangibles at the ballpark? For God's sake. You guys sit together now. every game you go oh, out yeah. there? Oh, yeah. Uh, I hope the people out there in television land don't think I'm associated with this man, the way he talks impact ball players and stuff like that. But uh, I'm, I'm looking for the Orioles to come in either first or second. I'm serious. We'll be in the middle of August, and we'll be in the hunt. And whether or not we're in the top, I'll give us third. I'll go first. This hurts me, but Brian I agree Khan. with Turkey. First or second. I see it's right in it. Right in it. Okay. But it's baseball. You know, oh, we're we're going we're just going right yeah. there. Turkey Joe Traver, Always thank you for your time. Prime time, Pat McGee. A pleasure. <laughs> baseball Billy you. Jones. My we'll be right back. Okay, who's the greatest Did he have a beard? No. Case Park. Yeah. Greatest story of all time. Enjoying uh, the beauty of Oriole Park at Camden Yards, and uh, Keith and Jack uh, to, to share some comments about this place. Jack, uh, do you remember the early days when Memorial Stadium opened as we get ready to baptize this house? Yeah, and nothing to compare with this. Uh, there was interest and there was some excitement over the fact that Major League Ball was returning, more so than the fact that they were in a ballpark that was in the uh, throes of being made more modern. Uh, nothing like this. Uh, they didn't have all of us around, I guess, to, to tell them for six months ahead of time uh, just how important all this was going to be. Keith, we heard about great things here uh, for weeks and months from uh, writers, architects, everybody. Uh, and I guess uh, most people are walking out saying uh, it's everything they told us it would be. Yeah, I think when people that have ties to Memorial Stadium come in here and the sentiment of Memorial Stadium, they're going to forget about Memorial Stadium when they walk through here and sit down and just take a look around. I mean, it's, it's pretty impressive. The other thing I think we should tell the fans is you are on top of the action here and you had better watch every pitch because there will be some balls screaming into the seats. You really have to be careful. They better have. They are closer to the action than they've ever been at Memorial Stadium. There's almost no foul territory here that serves a buffer between you and what's going on out there. So the time to take a sip of your big orange drink and the time to put that little peck on the cheek of your significant other is when a pitch is not being thrown. The ball can come at you very quickly here. That's a plus for watching the game. It puts you right there. But you got to pay attention. Keith, I guess uh, one thing we're going to see here, a lot of balls that used to be caught at Memorial Stadium in foul territory are going to be in the stands, and that's going to give the batter an extra hack. Good for the hitters, bad for the pitchers. Uh, I'm anxious to see how the, you know, the pitchers... You know, if they change their strategy for this, strategy for this, you know, I'm anxious to see how to, the the outfielders play the caroms and 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 you know, and the walls out here. How do, you, how do you play one off the tall wall in right field? <laughs> you know, I don't know. I know all the fans are excited about it. We are excited about it. We will be here, not Keith and I, but Jack at least, bright and early tomorrow morning. What time are you going to be here, Jack? We'll be here 5:30 with a morning show to uh, start touring people around and getting them used to what's going on here in opening day. And then at noon, uh, coverage starts on uh, News Channel 2 at noon, and of course we'll have the live broadcast. We'll be here live from noon until about 7 o'clock whenever this thing wraps up uh, with the full day. It's going to be fun. I almost can't wait for all the hoopla to be over and for this to be a regular ballpark and come on down here and see a game with a, with a ballpark that's almost full but not overflowing. And that's going to be great fun because this is a great place to play baseball. We're all looking forward to it. Jack will see you at 5.30. Keith and I and the rest of the gang back at noon. Have a happy opening day. Good night, everybody. There's a long drive deep down the left field line. This one has a chance. It's over. Orioles 92. The birds go downtown. Was brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers, who reminds you to please drink responsibly because friends know when to say when. CNP Yellow Pages. No other book can match it. Charlestown Retirement Community, Maryland's most active life care community. Mann and Clark Attorney, Oldsmobile and your gallant men of old. Get the Oldsmobile Edge at your nearby Olds dealer. And by Sip and Snack.